Hallelujah. I want to preach and teach this morning on one of the most misunderstood subjects in the Bible. And if you have your Bible with you, uh, go to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and I'll start at the 8th verse. And the subject is the gift of tongues. Is it for the believer in this day or have they ceased with all the other gifts? And uh, of course there's a lot of denominations and ministers that preach that they have ceased. But the final court of appeal on anything about the Bible is the Bible itself. So we want to see what God has to say about not only the gift of tongues, but all gifts, but majoring on the gift of tongues. And if you've got your Bible, got it open to 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, and I'm going to start at the 8th verse. And it says, whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. And whether they be tongues, they shall cease. And whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. How many say amen? Amen. So there is a definite time when the gift of tongues, and here it means knowledge, means the, the gift of the word of knowledge and prophecy, it will cease. The Bible says that. There's going to be a time. I just read it to you. But Peter and all the other disciples said that God said, in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and they shall prophesy. So I know the gift of prophecy is going to be in the last days, in the days we're in. How many say amen? How many knows we're in the last days? Well, then it's the gift of prophecy and all the other ones are in operation. Amen? And the reason why is that these gifts shall cease is because they only bring us partial knowledge. God is speaking to us partial knowledge. No one has all the wisdom and knowledge of God per se. We're in the dark about a lot of things. But God brings us as we need it a portion of of his wisdom and knowledge through the gifts. So for we know in part, reading yet, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part done away with. Until the perfect knowledge of God comes, the complete knowledge of his revelation comes, God still has to speak to us by prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and tongues and interpretation. Now, Paul said, he didn't know it all. How many say amen? And he had to depend on God bringing revelation and inspiration to him. How many say amen? And I want to go to the 12th verse now. Now, say now. Now. We see in a glass darkly. How many say amen? amen? For now we see through a glass darkly. And the word darkly here means The Greek word is enigma. We bring an enigma over into English, and it means a riddle. Now we're looking into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, but a lot of things are just little shadows. We don't see the clear picture. Like a Polaroid, when it's first shot, you don't see the clear picture. How many say amen? 
So right now in the church dispensation, God is still speaking to the church partial wisdom and partial knowledge of his com overall complete plan. It's a riddle. A lot of things to me are a riddle. How many say amen? I don't know about you, but to be honest, a lot of things are a riddle to me. I don't see it all clearly. But then it says when this perfect knowledge comes, but we shall, then Paul said, then shall I know even as I am known. Amen. When I get this full revelation, I'm going to know everything even as I'm known by God in everything. Amen. And I'd like to have the person in this building, and even you out in television land, I can't see your hand, but I can the ones in the building, raise your hand if you know everything. Because if you do, I want to see you after the service. I got some things I want to ask you. <laughs> now, say now. Yeah. Now in this church dispensation, God is revealing his full plan and his knowledge and wisdom through the gift of prophecy, tongues, and interpretation, and word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And until the perfect knowledge, complete knowledge comes, we're only going to know in part. Amen. And we can only prophesy in part. How many say amen? amen? And when will we know complete knowledge? It says in the last part of the 12th verse, but then, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. How many say Amen. When Jesus comes, the riddles will be answered. We'll be seeing him face to face. And he will not have to speak to us when he sets his kingdom up on the earth in prophecy. In word of wisdom. In word of knowledge. He'll be here disseminating his revelation. Like Paul said that in another scripture that God through the ages is going to use Jesus to show his eternal plan and purpose. Amen. So right now, I'm not seeing Jesus face to face. The Greek says, prosopon, pros, prosopon. Prosopon means face and eye, face and face and eye. We're going to be right up to God. Huh? We're going to be looking right at Jesus, my face and I, looking at his face and I. And he will be giving me his complete knowledge. I won't have to ask the Lord for a word of wisdom or a prophecy. You know, we got people running over wanting a word. No wisdom. We'll have the full knowledge. How many say amen? We just know in part. And like I said a little bit ago, if you know it all, I want to check you out after the service. Amen. How many say amen? amen? So, the gifts of the Spirit are going to last, even these last days of the church age, to the very day that the Lord takes us out of this world and then brings us back. How many say amen? amen? And we'll have face to face from him, just like when he arose from the dead and appeared to his disciples and apostles, and he gave them a 40-day postgraduate course. Amen. And what he did then was open up all of the scriptures that was uh, seen in a glass darkly in the Old Testament. It was an enigma. He opened up all of those scriptures to them. How many say amen? amen? The old covenant that didn't see the church with the Gentile as a joint heir, huh? as an equal heir with the Jew. They didn't see the new man made of Jew and Gentile. How many say amen? amen. 
all they knew was two groups of people under the Old Testament. And that was the Jew and the Gentile. But in the New Testament, there's three groups of people. The Jew, the Gentile, and the born again made of Jew and Gentile. A new man. How many say amen? But a lot of the mystery, and a mystery in the Bible doesn't mean something you don't can't know, but it means something you do not know except God gives you revelation. Amen. And a lot of mystery in the New Testament, we only will know it as the Spirit of God speaks to us in the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and prophecy. Amen. Even when Paul raised up, God raised up Paul to be the apostles of the Gentile, Peter just couldn't understand a lot of things that he was preaching. You know, there's two Gospels, don't you know? There's the Gospel to the Jew, and Peter was the main apostle. Then there's the Gospel to the Gentile, and Paul was the main apostle. And Peter in his letter said, listen to Paul. His prophecies and teaching or scripture sometimes hard to understand. He was still seeing a lot of things of the New Testament revelation. You see, Paul had a, God had to take Paul in the third heaven, and there with God, Jesus face to face. He was right face to face with Jesus, and Jesus gave him the revelation and the program for the New Testament church. And as things came on the scene later, God had to speak in prophecy and word of wisdom and word of knowledge unto the church and the leaders of the church and the people of the church. Amen. So we need the gifts now. I would hate to think if we didn't have the gifts now, we're in the last battle of the last days when the devil's throwing everything into battle and we got to fight him without any weapons. Huh? Because our, the gifts are our weapons to defeat the devil. You know, when God says, thus saith to me, I don't care what thus saith you. When God says, thus saith to me, I don't care what thus saith anybody else. Amen. How many say amen? Because my faith and my salvation is built on thus saith the Lord. So their gift's going to be here until Jesus comes with the perfect knowledge. And then I think Amos said, then shall the knowledge of the Lord cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Then. But until now, we only know in part. And I can only preach and prophesy in part. But I want to know all of the part that we can have till he comes. And when we... Uh, go to heaven, somebody said, well, what's one of the reasons why he went to heaven? I believe the reason why he's going to go to heaven so that he can take the whole church and open up the whole plan that he's going to bring into operation so that when we come back, you know, we can set the kingdom up. How many say amen? How many's looking forward to him coming? And I tell you, if we're not in the last days with all of the wickedness, the terror, Huh? With all of the wars, with all of the things happening in nature, tsunamis, mudslides, floods in our nation. How many say amen? If uh, these aren't the last days, I don't think I want to be around here for the last days. And all the wickedness and all of the demon powers that are raging out there. So, God can only speak to us now in part. But I'm looking forward and I'm hungering for that day then face to face. When I come back with the Lord, I won't have to pray. How many say amen? I'll be right there with him. And uh, if he tells me to go check out the uh, 20 acres of his kingdom, I'll be able to go and 
check it on out. If he tells me to take over Baltimore and Maryland because we're going to rule cities, you know, how many say amen? I won't have to pray about him. Well, what is your will for this? I'm going to know his will. And I'm going to put it into operation. And a lot of people say that the gift of tongues is the inferior gift. And that if people speak in tongues, they're speaking gibberish. How many say amen? Let me ask you a question. Do you think the Holy Ghost would give any gift that's inferior? And do you think that anybody speaking by the Holy Ghost is going to speak gibberish? How many say amen? And the reason why the devil fights it and tries to put a stigma on it, because he knows, listen to be careful now, that the individual, the greatest gift to the individual is the gift of tongues. Amen. Amen? It's the greatest gift to the individual. And the reason is two things. The reason is he that speaks in tongues speaks to God. You, you got a connection to God. And remember John said, if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petition that we desire him. And he that speaks in a tongue edifies himself. And that means spiritually uplifts in advance. Him and I thank God I'm like Paul. I speak in tongues more than you all. That's what Paul said. They were trying to say Paul was limiting them. He wasn't living them. He said, permit that to speak in tongues. And I speak in tongues more than you all. But in the service, I want to speak words in your language that you understand. And that's why prophecy is greater in the service than tongues, except tongues are interpreted. And when tongues are interpreted, they equal prophecy. Huh? Thank God I got something in all of the pressure and in all of the battle in this last day that um, almost like Paul pressed out of measure, thank God, God gave me a gift that I can get away in my closet and uh, speak directly to him secrets. Huh? How many say amen? And build myself up and then come out of my closet singing, uh, I feel like traveling on. I feel like pressing on. I feel like fighting on. How many say amen? So contrary to what the detractors say, because the devil knows it's the greatest gift to the individual, building herself up, just like to the whole church body in the service, prophecy is the greater gift because it builds up the whole church. It's kind of, Ironical that if it's no such a good gift, how come it's the first one God gave? How many say amen? It's the first gift that he gave to the church because he knew he needed them to build herself up. And along with prophecy that the whole church could be built up. How many say amen? He told them after his 40-day postgraduate course, he says, now I want you to Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. I think that's Luke 24, 49. And I checked out the word tarry. You know what the word is? Sit. Sit in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Why would he tell them that? Because they were Galileans and they wanted to get out of Jerusalem because the, they were fearing that the uh, religious leaders were going to get a hold of them and kill them. And the Lord said, no, you sit in Jerusalem until you be with power from on high and then you will be equi equipped to have the anointing and the power to be my witness. Amen. And it's, huh, really ironical that the word for witness in the Greek, we bring it over into the English as martyr. And the reason why 
that word martyr became the way we know it now is because most of the early church witnessed with their life. How many say amen? Be my witness. Huh? Witness that I'm not in the tomb. Witness somebody didn't steal my body. Witness on the third day I rose from the dead. Witness I'm alive forevermore. Witness I'm the alpha. I'm the omega. I am the first and the last and the beginning and the end. And I am he that was dead. But I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys and the authority to the greatest enemy of mankind. Death. How many say amen? Don't let your heart be troubled. huh? When you're down and out, run in your prayer closet. Turn on your gift of tongues. Get a direct connection with God. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He will hear you. He will answer you. And you'll come out, like I said, singing, I feel like traveling on. I feel like pressing on. I feel like moving on. First gift given to the church. For when the day of Pentecost, huh? Look, first of all, Acts 1 8, Jesus said, after the 40 days, you wait in Jerusalem. You stay there. And it's an intensified word in the Greek. Don't you go anywhere else but stay in Jerusalem and I'm going to send the promise of my Father and after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power and then you shall be my martyrs. Amen. So 10 days later, later, because 10 is a new beginning. And God was going to begin a new move in the earth. Huh? The first Holy Ghost baptized charismatic church. And I don't mean like some of the use charismatic in this day. The first gifted church. Every church that God has raised up in this last days is a charismatic church with all of the gifts in it, including speaking in tongues. How many say amen? And what happened? You know that famous scripture in Acts 2-4, uh, and it said, and there came a sound from heaven huh, like a mighty rushing wind and sat on each of them huh, and the place where they were what? where they sat. See, he told them in Luke 24, 19, sit. And then here comes the Holy Ghost sitting in the book of Acts. They're sitting there waiting for him. How many say amen? If they ran out of strength to pray, they just sat there. Amen? And clothing tongues like as fire sat on them. And they began to speak in other tongues or languages as the Holy Ghost gave them what to utter and he didn't give them to the utter no gibberish. For the Greek word here to utter is only used four times in the Bible and it means to speak high and lofty, noble and great deep things of God. Hallelujah. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need to be able to speak the high and lofty things and revelation of God. You know you really can't give a real witness to somebody that you're testifying without some power and anointing on you. Amen. And God gave the first gift to the church with power and anointing and they prophesied so that they could witness that he is not in the grave. The reason why the devil hates tongues because tongue says he is risen. Every time you speak in tongues, it says he's alive, he's risen. Cause Jesus said, uh, 
that if I don't go, the comforter will not come. But if I go, I will send him. And that's proven that he sent the Holy Ghost. Every time you speak in tongues, you are saying it. He's alive. Hallelujah. He's alive. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. And he's everything in but. Between. Oh, I thank God for his gifts. Hallelujah. Oh, praise him, praise him. I got it. I'm like, Paul, I speak in tongues more than you all. Hallelujah. Another good clap offering. 